Well, I am so excited. I feel like it is a dream come true to be talking to two of my favorite ladies. I don't know if they know that. Two of my favorite ladies, Sonia Morgan and Luanne de Lesseps, uh, to talk <laughs> all about Crappy Lake. And I love seeing you guys kind of out of your element. Yeah, fish out of water, they say. Well, yeah, fish well, I caught the catfish and brought it out of the water with my bare hands. <laughs> How big was it, Lil? How big? How big? This big. Oh, no, this big. I mean, episode two, Sonia, you caught something yourself. So good for you. Uh, popped or, or pegged? What'd I do? <laughs> I don't know if you guys popped or pegged anything, but you had fun I, with your trucker boy. Me, I, was po I popped a stitch from my liposuction. <laughs> Luann got over that real quick. She's like, Sonia. You can't be wearing a compression garment on the show. It's 110 <laughs> degrees. Wait, was did that happen? You popped a liposuction thing during it, intimate moments? <laughs> yeah, because after lipo, it has to drain. And I didn't know all this for reals, you know. But we get through anything, Luann and I. We have no problem. <laughs> Okay, Luann, I'm ready for the next Class with the Countess book update to be what a, what a gentleman should do in a moment like that. Well, uh, what he should do is uh, not even know that she popped a stitch. So exactly. it didn't even register in this in this guy's head. Richard or Richard, we should call him. Well, that's what I love so much about Crappy Lake 2 is just watching you two just take this town by storm. And I feel you guys didn't know what to expect. They didn't know what to expect. For Lu Luann, I want to know what is the what was the thing that kind of shocked you the most that you started to miss? Because that's what I want to get with, because I'm kind of, a, 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 I'm a diva when I travel. I need some nice stuff. I need air conditioning. I need a little robe. What is something that you're like, oh, this isn't here? I need it. Well, I get off the plane. I go, we're going to sweat like whores in church because it was so hot. And, and then they give us a car with no air conditioning. <laughs> I'm like, you got to be kidding me, right? He goes, the mayor goes, I'm sorry, my air conditioning broke. Just open all the windows. It's going to be fine. I'm like, no, it's not. We're like driving around a tin can. So Danny, you would not have been happy. Okay. No. It was well, hot and trying. sweaty. And, um, and I was like, oh boy, you know, and that was my first. So you first got the truck, Lou. We got the truck. We didn't get the yacht, but we got the truck. We got the truck. Thank God. Um, but you know, I mean, uh, from the get go, we were like, we didn't really know what we were getting into. You know, we, we're in real time tasked by the mayor to do all these things for the town. We didn't know going in what exactly we were going to do. Mm -hmm. This is the list. It's a mile long and you girls got six weeks to get this done. And you know what? It was a challenge. It was a challenge. Um, and but we rose to the occasion. I mean, we are from small towns, you know, originally, and of course our lives have changed uh, drastically. And, but but they thought, oh, these fancy girls coming from New York, um, they didn't know what to expect. Half of them didn't know who we were. They thought so we were from like, Hollywood. They had a big sign, welcome to Hollywood. And I loved when they were all guessing, like, who's gonna come off the plane? Louis they have no the idea. Protesters. Luann goes, the protesters, they have money. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so, uh, Sonia, for you, what was something that kind of uh, shocked you the most, like the for, after the first night or like your first thought when you were laying in bed in that motel, what was going through your head? Okay, well, I have to tell you, just to elaborate on what Luann had said about the air conditioning, for me, if you know me, I have to have a tub. When I went into the bathrooms, I was shocked that this motel had cast iron tubs, <laughs> plastic ones, the ones that when you fill it up with bubbles, it stays hot. That saved me, that and my toaster oven. But the thing that shocked me the most is when Luann agreed to eat fried testicles that were this long with a little <laughs> fat at the end. I, I don't eat anything with hair on it, okay? Not even chicken wings. That is It's fried. Right. Yeah, so guess what? The outside of it. I looked. I took the little batter off, and there were long hairs. No oh, stop. Oh, oh. Why do you tell her that now? Why didn't you, you tell her? I told her don't eat it. <laughs> well, I do. I do love that you guys kind of, even though there were a lot of things that you're like, what's going on? You sort of jumped right into the races, and I feel there's only in in the Bravo sphere. It's really I feel like you two and maybe a few others that would be as open to kind of doing everything and just being like, we're here, we're gonna have a good time, help everybody out. What was the most fun moment 
that either of you had? Go ahead, Lou, then I'll tell you mine. Um, I must say putting together a variety show of Follies and having Paula Abdul come in to help the dancers was the icing on the cake for me. I mean, you know, we both do, we perform, we, you know, I have my cabaret, Sonia has her cabaret, and to pull together a community of people that we don't know and find talent and actually make a show out of it was a real challenge. And I felt very proud of ourselves because we pulled it off and we got Paula Abdul to come. So, you know, the icon in, in the business. So that was really a, a great moment for me personally. I t I'd say the funnest thing for me was, cause I'm a gardener. I really liked when we went over to this piece of land and they said, can you make this a playground? There's 125 houses and they have no place to go. So Luann gets up in the bucket <laughs> which I don't do. And it's like shaking and she's like whacking the tree herself. And I'm I'm in a tractor, you know, pushing brush with hot guys. You know, all the guys are married, but they're all real men. So it was a real pleasure working with them. They know how to do their job. And then when we finally got the jungle gym, that thing that looks like a house with slides and swings, that thing was over a hundred grand. And we really had to pull it out of our hat, the contact to get that. They drove for two days to bring that to us. Oh, so it was an all hands on deck situation, which I love. And I love that you brought up because my jaw dropped when I was like, Paula Abdul is making yeah. an appearance. Luann, was there anybody, if you could have like manifested anybody else to come in, who would you have wanted maybe to sing a duet with? Ooh. Oh, well, well, one of my favorite cabaret performers, which is Brid Bridget Everett. I mean, yeah. when it comes to, I, I think she does like cabaret, cabaret and cabaret all at the same time. It's like- yeah. You know, remember when she was on The Housewives and she performed in my cabaret show originally? With Townhouse you know, City. She, she motivated the audience. She motivated you, actually. Yeah, Townhouse um, City. So, you know, listen, um, to have Paul Abdul, to have, you know, somebody like Bridget Everett or, um, you know, all, my actually my cabaret director comes on the show to help us with the with the follies and... He's the, the director of Barbara Streisand and um, Kristen Chenoweth. And he comes in and helps us a lot with the show also. I so think we, you'd you be know, great. At your, the, what's the question about dream person having your cabaret? I, I could see you with Bernadette Peters. Ooh. Bernadette. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Like Love that. her. Okay. Someone I'd might be your new director. Peter. No, we we have we work really well together. We don't agree on everything because I do improv. I fly by the seat of my pants and I think everything will be fine if the parents show up and buy tickets. It's all about them and their kids. And then Luann is like the tough judge. She's like, no, Sonia, we're not having the unicyclist with the <laughs> violin that's 12 years old. And I'm like, he's so good. She's Wait, like, I loved him. He was, I was so we, impressed. What, you know I what was, I did? I was like, you can't, you can't, ride the unicycle and play the violin because it didn't work. So <laughs> guess what we did with him? I said, can you hold a card? Act yeah. one, yeah. act two. Oh, so we man. found a way to use everyone in the town. I like that because for a while it did, it made me a little nervous that he was very Cirque du Soleil, like, <laughs> like in Vegas where I was like, where is this little kid riding off to? I didn't know what was going to happen next. <laughs> well, he's kind of like the, 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 the girl that goes around the boxing ring with, yeah. you know, that's how, that was my vision for him, and it worked out. Worked out great. Hello, we did lose our contortionist. We he did got stuck in a position, and they had to take him <laughs> to the top. I liked him too, but Lou was like, "We can't have everyone." No, and I wanted to have everyone. I even wanted a fireman in the show. Like, just <laughs> I wonder why. I wonder why you wanted a fireman in the show, Sonia. And I'm like, sure you wanted a fireman I, in the top too. <laughs> I I did spend a night at the firehouse. <laughs> there was a blackout more on that later more on that later <laughs> more on that later no oh, it's not on the show <laughs> but i'm wondering because i feel when this show was announced everybody was like this is the answer to the simple life and there's two, you two are so perfect to like fill those shoes sonia did you like watch the simple life or have you what are your what is your relationship with parasol and have you had run-ins did you DM her for any advice about this? Or you're like, I know what I'm doing. First of all, when you get a call and it's Jeff Jenkins who did the Kardashians and Simple Life, and he also did Bling, which was a great uh, series. You, you, you don't say where, you just say when I'm ready. I'll come tomorrow. And then his co-producer is from Benton. Oh, Russell yeah. is from Benton. You know, so the fact that they 
handpicked us two out of everyone in the whole franchise, all of Bravo, we knew that this was going to be perfect for us and that Jeff wasn't going to be making any mistakes there. So, yeah. And I didn't have to call Paris. I never watched that show. In fact, I had asked the producer, should I be watching it? They're like, just come be yourself. It always works. And uh, I was just thrilled. And Lou, I, I, I watched a simple life. In fact, I'm going to share some, something with you that I haven't really told many people, which is that my daughter five years ago, she goes, mom, the perfect show for you would be to redo The Simple Life. And guess what? She manifested it. Yeah. And it actually happened. And I watched The Simple Life because I love that show. And I'm the Paris. She's the Nicole Richie. And yeah. um, and it's, it's, it's like The Simple Life on steroids because we go there and we're working with the community and the mayor to improve the town. So there's a lot more at stake than The Simple yeah. Life. Wait, right. Okay, so your daughter needs a producer credit also, I feel now. I know, right? She really made that go. But that's also, I love that you brought that up because I feel it's the simple life, but with more heart and soul in it because oh. you guys are so, like, it's like simple life was so funny. You guys are so funny, but I love it. It's just not you two being like, let's see, like Luann and Sonia, like fish. It's you guys are getting to know the community, doing all these stuff and putting in work. And we see in some uh, teasers for upcoming episodes, you get like, you get really invested in it. You get worried when things aren't going as well as they should be. That's right. That's right. You're we were people. We were we were invested. We um, I, you know, I've been saying we we lost our life for six weeks. I mean, we gave it our all for them. <laughs> it was not. There was no us. There was no like. I we had zero time because we had to do so many things in six weeks, so that we we put our life on the back burner for these people, and. And I think it shows because we really, you know, we we build, you know, a, a fence for the a dog shelter. They have nowhere to put the dogs outside. We build a playground for children under privileged, you know, neighborhoods. We, um, you know, we do a variety show of follies for the town to raise money. So we we did so many things that that we could leave behind. These are not just temporary things. Also, these are things that, you know, will keep the town you know, functioning in, in a much better place than they were before we got there. So, you know. Well, also, Lou, we should add that the people in town are very proud. They have a phrase, it's a bent, bent and proud. And the work ethic is really strong, as Lou and I also have very, we work hard. We get things done. And they were there to help us every step of the way, whether it was heads of the head of the parks and recreation uh, we had the garden club with us. Luann flew her brother down there, the poor guy, to do the contract. <laughs> and Luann flirted with a fence guy to get the fence done so we could, you know, do that trade out. Happens. So that the dogs could be adoptable. No one could adopt them because they were so caged up. They looked scary. They were unhappy. And then once they ran, they were so, so happy. Well, and, and I love you know, to that jungle gym was no small feat. That was our biggest sweat because that's 125 families, houses that don't have any place to go. And they were so excited. They were all cleaning up their houses, sitting out on their porches, watching us build from the bottom up, from the, mowing the grass, pulling the weeds, whacking the trees, to bringing in the jungle gym. It, yeah, it was, we did a lot of heavy lifting on this trip. I mean, so we yeah. weren't there, we had people doing things. I we moved furniture, we ripped mm -hmm. up carpets, we mm -hmm. painted, we yeah. did. We had a muralist come to town who painted murals so that the tourism would be increased in this town. They are now selling our rooms at the Benton Motel for more money than the other rooms ah. because we improved those rooms in the motel. We couldn't get to everything, but let me tell you, we really worked hard to make what we did um, lasting. So yeah. when we left, they would, you know, they would have that. And I'm they sure it must also feel very- now. When you come to Crappy Lake, there, to, to Benton, Illinois, welcome to Benton, Illinois. And it's me and Luann and a catfish. Uh, I, okay. I'm booking yeah. my flight right now because I need to see that. Have to go. <laughs> And the, and the motel has expanded. They bought the property next door, so they're ready oh. to have year-round travelers, not just for deer hunting in November. Good, because I don't know how to deer hunt, but I know how to take a bath, so I'll be in your room. And there I feel like go. it must have been so great, too, because obviously, like, you guys are reality TV legends. You've done this so many times. But to do a show, too, where you're like, oh, like, there is a lasting, beautiful moment from it that you can even look back to that's not even on the show and like people that you paths would never cross with. But I'm curious because you two have known each other for so long and Luann, I'll let you start. 
Did you learn anything about Sonia differently while there for six weeks at Crappy Lake? Um, you know, listen, I've stayed with Sonia in the townhouse, which is all, you see it all on the housewives. Um, she comes to stay with me in the Hamptons, right? So I feel like I know Sonia so well. And that's what makes us a perfect duo is that, you know, you know when you need to switch the light on and switch it off. Mm -hmm. Sonia is somebody who um, loves her privacy and loves to be alone and loves to, you know, do her thing. So when we were not filming, Sonia was pretty reclusive, you know, and I, yeah. the, I drove the whole time. So when I had a day off, which was very rare in the six weeks, I would take the truck and I drove through Kentucky and I went to Nashville to see Desmond Child, who wrote Viva La Diva. Viva La Diva. Viva La Diva. He wrote Living on a Prayer and Living yes. in La Diva And he has a house in Nashville, which was divine. And I was like, oh my God, a slice of paradise for one night. Because you have to remember, we're living in a four-walled motel. <laughs> I feel so, like the walls would start to like get like get shorter and shorter. Yeah. But, you know, I brought along my sheets. I brought along my Nespresso machine. I brought it all because I wanted to feel comfortable. And mm -hmm. guess what? It kind of feel felt like home after a certain amount of time. It really doesn't matter where you are. It's about the comfort level of where you are. And we, we got comfortable there. It was our home. And these people were like our family. We yeah. really love the motel owners, Akash and his beautiful wife. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're such beautiful people and the community is amazing. So, you know, they didn't expect us to come along. They didn't know who we are, most of them. But let me tell you, we, they were pleasantly surprised because we got in, we did the work, we showed them that we're here to really help you guys. It was not just some fake, you know, we're coming in. Yeah, it was sad to leave, it was sad to leave. But I mean, to add to that question, like what was the most surprising thing that I learned about Luann? I think I would reflect what Luann's saying is we really already knew each other so well. We're like an old married couple. We don't have to constantly chatter to know what we're thinking. We matched our outfits by accident every single day. It was like osmosis all the time, what we wanted to do. But I think what I, I think what is surprising is that the two of us could spend every single day together for that long of a time in that kind of heat off season at 110 <laughs> degrees and not choke each other out. <laughs> we really could get things done. And I feel really good about that, that we have that together. I that we that. I know that to do it, help I, people. I want multiple seasons of Crappy Lake because it's so good. Yeah. And I love to that you guys are like an old married couple because you've been doing a lot of travel in this year. Because I know you two ladies just returned from an ultimate type of trip. <laughs> how how was that energy different than Crappy Lake? When it was just the two of you, how was being back in the mix with some of the ladies that you've also known for a long time? Go ahead, Lou. And I'll well, you know, from uh, Crappy Lake to St. Bart's is quite the departure. <laughs> um, you know, we went from, you know, this small motel room um, in a small town to St. Bart's, the international island that it is, and French, and I get to speak French again, and I, you know, it was a really a big shift, but it was great to be back with the ladies, be back, you know, sharing a home, back in the same home, by the way, where the pirate story went down, um, and to be together again was really a lot of fun. Dorinda, myself, Sonia, Ramona, and then to have, you know, Kelly back, and Kristen Takeman, it was like, it's kind of like Scary Island Part Two. Yeah. And with with the pirate. With the pirate. Of course, There's the always pirate. another pirate. St. Oh. Park is all about the pirate theme. Yeah. So for me, it was like to go from Crappy Lake to total luxury in the way, you know, that St. Bart's does it. It's French, it's Caribbean. The, the shopping is upper level, not like when we put Luann in the lower level in Vermont. <laughs> Or in the Hamptons, um, there there was just um, gorgeous people everywhere, very jet set, and of course we stay in the most beautiful villa that everyone knows, and we're entertaining like we love to. Mm -hmm. We had lobster and caviar, mm -hmm. and you know rosé all day, and and just that that in itself is fabulous. And but we not just so well, so, so well that we could go there. We can talk to each other about, you know, if we have a disagreement or, or an issue and have resolution and keep it moving and keep it moving. It was great. 
we we break the fourth wall a lot, which is fantastic because, you know, we talk about things that happened over the course of 13 seasons, you know, and you get to hear our perspective. And that's what I love about Ultimate Girls Trips because we get to do that, you know, and I think the fans are going to love it because, you know, we talk about things in the past that we might not have you know, opened up that door and now we get to open that door and talk about it and we get to revisit. And so I think that's a really cool aspect of Ultimate Girls Trips because we do that. That's what I love our so much about have been by Our viewers have been by our side through everything, up and down, all around. So it's not like, you know, they, they might not have not seen us on camera for a while, but when they get to St. Bart's with us, they're going to be like, well, of course, we know that. Oh, we and also all the Bravo yeah, fans are dedicated. They've been keeping up with you guys even like daily on Instagram and everything like that. And they're also kind of like their own. I always say like, it's like the show Homeland where they're like their own detectives and everything. And I know uh, Bethany laughed it off, but a lot of people thought Bethany was going to be a surprise guest. What would either of you have done if Bethany just showed up in a pirate suit there? Well, she's great TV. I mean, we could always use the extra ratings, but I, we didn't have to have Bethany or anybody else. This was a very in sync group. It was a perfect group for me. What do you think, Lou? Well, you know, you know what happens to pirates. Sometimes they go down with the ship. So um I thought Bethany came as a pirate, she'd go down with the ship. Okay. You're so brutal sometimes. I'm brutal. I feel well, because it'd be the time where she she does like to talk a talk a talk, but there'd be time she'd be talk a talk a talking with all the people she talks about. So it would be a lot of I think there would be an intense plank for that pirate. Well, I don't think we have to worry about that because Beth Bethany hasn't shown. I would have made her walk the plank. She would have had to walk the plank. <laughs> I, I love it so much. And what you guys like for, if you could, because I know obviously you didn't know you were going to Crappy Lake until you went to Crappy Lake. A final thought for Sonia, I'll let you answer the first one. If you could have uh, like your choice of like a state or anywhere that you would love the second season of Crappy Lake to be, where do you, where Texas. would you want to I would want to go to Texas because I love to see my girl Lou on a horse and, you know, we wear our cowboy outfits. We had a great time. We went to Missouri that time. I'll make her sleep outside one night with me and <laughs> under the stars and we can do some ranching and cattle rustling. Oh, I love cowboy. oh Cowboys. I mean, hello. That's a nice job. Yeah, Lou, Lou, are you down for Texas or anywhere else you'd love to go? Where'd you um, go? Where do you want to go, Lou? God, I think there's just so many places. I mean, I'd like to go to Alaska. Oh, oh yeah. Women. You know, I, I don't know. There's so many eight places. Eight men to every eight women. Yeah, that's great. Um, You know, I think there's so many places I'd like to go. But, you know, I'm, you know, Sonia's stuck on Texas for some reason. So I'd like I'd like to be on Yellowstone with oh, Kevin. Yeah. Well, um, they feel like Texas, so. Oh, he's not in Texas. Where is that? Is that Texas? No, they no. say they're in Montana, but they film it in Mon Texas Ranch. Montana. Yeah, I, I kinda, I'm, I'm down for the cowboy thing. Okay, down for the cowboy. Sonia wants you to sweat next season, too. <laughs> you were going to go to Alaska for a little air, for a little ice. You guys are going to, but I mean, you two ladies keep it hot, so you got to <laughs> you gotta follow the heat. Thank you so much for chatting with us. And everybody is going to fall in love with Crappy Lake. It really is a um, show where I was laughing, but then I like felt good after every episode. It's just so great. Yeah, Andy called and he goes, Lou, I don't laugh at many things at all. I never laugh at stuff. But let yeah. me tell you, laughing out loud funny. And, you know, that's the the seal <clears throat> of approval right there, which is yeah. you know, the major He's nod for us. He and said we it's worked, revolutionary. We worked really hard and we're very proud of what we do, we've done. And the people of Benton um, are, are stronger and happy. And that's that's the best we could ask for.